Personal notice. Danger is my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you've got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California invites you to Let George Do It. In just a moment, we'll begin tonight's adventure of George Valentine. If you're a regular listener, you know that new RPM motor oil doubles engine life, the time between major overhauls due to lubrication. Now, actual case histories prove this fact. Even a cab company operating in the tough grind all cabs go through found new RPM reduced engine wear 71%. So, for top protection, get new RPM motor oil for your car at any standard station or independent Chevron gas station where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Now, tonight's story, Surprise, Surprise, Another Adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine, surprise, surprise. Come to me and you're in for a lovely surprise. If you receive this note from a member of your family, your uncle, you'd probably look forward to the surprise. To me, these words are frightening. They make me shudder. And yet I have to find out what's behind them. So you must help me. You must come along with me. Please, please do not fail me. Sincerely, Lenore Matson. Oh, your uncle's a bad boy and a practical joker from way back. There are many like him. That's right, Lenore. You may want to strangle some of them, but they're usually pretty harmless. Uncle Glenn's always been vicious, cruel. The family hasn't seen him in years. Family? Yes, my mother, before she died. She, she was his only sister. But I, I think Uncle Glenn's always hated her. And I understand he hasn't seen his brother, Uncle Jason, for years either. <laughs> he's a nice, friendly chap. Uncle Glenn's made a lot of money. But he's never offered any of us a cent. We needed it when Dad was killed in an accident. Now he has a lovely surprise for me. I can imagine. Well, he might feel sorry for what he's done. And being older and maybe a little wiser, he might want to make up. The age of miracles is over, Mr. Valentine. <laughs> How long ago did you get this message? Oh, a week. I, I don't even know where he got my address. I couldn't make up my mind what to do. Oh, uh, did you get in touch with your other uncle, Uncle Jason? I don't even know where he's been for the last few years. Oh, we're a fine, close family, we are. Uh-huh. Well, uh, just what did you have in mind for me to do, Lenore? Well, I, I thought you and Miss Brooks might come with me as my friends. It's not too far from here. Point Summit, a few hours away. Well, I... It seems a little silly. I it? assure you of one thing, Mr. Valentine. Nothing Uncle Glenn has ever done has been trivial or silly. Mean and vicious, yes, but, but nothing small. Miss Brooks, you can understand how one can feel things without any real reason. No, oh, I've overworked my feminine intuition many a time. Usually not too successfully. Still, George, we might yeah, try... Okay, okay. I'll let you in on a little secret. I haven't been able to resist a surprise ever since I was five. What? Yeah. And you know, the first jack in the box I ever saw, it hit me square in the nose. Mr. Jester sure has an impressive-looking house. Brooksy, anything this size has earned the name Mansion. <laughs> Whatever your Uncle Glenn has made his money in, Lenore, he's made lots of it. I don't see any lights. George? Yeah. He's in the garden there somewhere. What? Such a sad sound. wonder if anybody's at home. 
Down the street, see? There's a man out on the porch. He might know. Oh, yeah. Dog probably just can't get out because of the high fence. Uncle Glenn wrote that he's always home. I should come any time for my lovely surprise. Well, we'll find out. Oh, uh, excuse me, sir. Huh? What's that? Oh, Mr. Jester over there. Do you happen to know if he's away for any length of time? Dog is howling and we thought... That's Biff. With Jester all the time. Real love. Well, there are no lights, so... uh... The lights in the back. Gotta be in the bedrooms. What do you mean, gotta be? Mr. Juster's just got to be home, young man. He had an awful accident two days ago. What? Got his car smacked up. He's expected to pass away any hour. Oh, no. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. dog. And a casket in the library. Mr. Juster had us order it yesterday. He said it was a dying man's whim. I realize how you feel, Miss Matson, but you and your friend simply can't see Mr. Juster right now. But I must see him. Dr. Hammer is with him. Mr. Juster regains consciousness once in a while, and when he does, Dr. Hammer will let you go in. Uh, tell me, Miss Schlager, this uh, unfortunate accident, just what was it? Uh, it's a miracle of sorts that Mr. Juster is still holding on. There was a lot of fog on Thursday night, a bad turn. The car turned over and over several times. Oh, how awful. He was driving all alone, so there was nobody to help him until motorists passed by and saw him. Wait. I'll shut the door to the garden. The poor animal seems to feel that something is wrong with its master. Well, isn't anybody else here at the house? Doesn't Mr. Juster have any other friends? I hate to say this, but I'm not a hypocrite. And I... Yes? Mr. Juster is... Well, a rather difficult man. I've been his secretary and sort of housekeeper for several years. Frankly, I wouldn't have stayed a week if he didn't pay me very well and if I didn't need the money. But doesn't the doctor hold out any hope for Uncle Glenn? I'm afraid not. And Dr. Hammer is as close to a friend as Mr. Juster has made here in Point Summit. Lenora, I guess all we can do is wait. As you can see, this is a big house. I'll show you all to your rooms. This may take hours. Before we go in there, Miss Matson, I just want to warn you that your uncle is very weak. Yes, Dr. Hammer. Oh, Miss Brooks and I will wait for you out here. No, no, Mr. Valentine. You and your friend, please come in, too. What? It would be a favor to a dying man. What do you mean? Miss Slager's in there already. It seems Mr. Juster has... Well, he's never made out a will, and he would like to dictate one. Oh, but we are Quite a sizable fortune is involved. I think it would be best to have as many disinterested witnesses as we can. Oh, I see. Frankly, Miss Matson, I wasn't aware of the fact that Mr. Juster had any family at all. He never mentioned a brother or a niece... And I was with Mr. Jester a great deal of the time. I'm not a practicing physician now. But, but you say he was glad now when you mentioned to him that I was here? Yes, he was. And it's a great blessing that you've come now while you can still bring him a little comfort. If we go right through here. He, he's closed his eyes again, Doctor. Uncle... Uncle Glenn? Come here, my dear, where he can see you when he opens his eyes. Oh, he looks so tired. I, I remember him when, when I was a young girl. He asked me to get my notebook, Doctor. Yes, I know. Uh, Glenn? Uh, Glenn, she's here, your niece. Uh, uh, oh, hello, Lenore. Oh, Uncle. Uncle. Let's have no... no fake emotions. I mean nothing to you. But... I don't know how you happen to be here. But you wrote to me and... What? What did I... Doctor. That's the way it is. Will. 
Uh, the, the will. Yes, Glenn, we're ready. Been mean. And not sorry. But want to make up a little. Julia. Yes, Mr. Juster. These people. George Valentine. No, I'm Claire Brooks. Friends of your nieces, Glenn. Oh. I. I can't. No, no, don't try to sit up. Just tell us what you want. Uh, uh, to you, Lenore, I want to leave five thousand dollars. I. I. I never knew you, really. But I've hurt you less than the others. So you get the smallest share. I, I didn't expect anything, Uncle. Have you got that, Julia? Yes, Mr. Chester. The rest of my estate I want to divide between the people I have hurt. You, Fred. I want to leave you $25,000. That's very generous of you, Glenn. The same amount to you, Julia. Yes, yes, Mr. Juster. And my brother, Jason, whom I hurt most of all. Have him located and let him have the rest of my money and this house with all that's in it and everything in my safe deposit box. What? Any objections, Doctor? But... Am I going too fast for you, Julia? No, sir. I'll buy my way into heaven. Sign. I want to sign. Mr. Valentine, uh, please help me with it. Sure. Heaven. Sam, here. Uh, can't. <sighs> can't. Just lay down, Glenn. It's all right. These people will sign as witnesses, and it'll be all right. Just as good. That's right, Mr. Juster. J- just let him alone. Please, please. Heaven, let let them sign. And then when I go, don't prolong the farce, Fred. Mr. Valentine, Miss Brooks. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, certainly. Sure. Thank, thank you. Tired. So very tired. I think all of you would better wait outside. Yes, yeah, of course. Right. Would be the best casket. My beautiful casket. Joke. Life is a big joke. Big joke. With me. Poor lonely man. Just laugh in it. That's about all we can do. Well, I'll fix some coffee. Thanks. Good idea. I suppose you'll want to stay till the end, Miss Matson. Oh, yes, yes, of course. You will stay, too. Please, Mr. Valentine. Please. Yeah. Yeah, Eleanor. We'll stay. See, you're not asleep yet, are you? No, George, wait a minute. What's the matter, darling? Uh, everybody seems to have retired. Well? Even Dr. Hammer. I saw him walk down the hall into his room. Well, he can leave Mr. Jester for a while, I guess. Maybe. But something bothers me about this whole setup. What are you talking about? I'll be darned if I really know. You know, it's a shame but Lenore should get to know her uncle when it's too late. Yeah. Come on. Where? I want you to be sort of lookout. Look out? Outside Mr. Jester's room. I'd like to talk to him for a moment, if I have the chance. Oh, stop being so mysterious. Well, it's just a hunch. But I can't help feeling that Justa didn't know about any note to Lenore. Any note that asked her to come out for a surprise. George, he's a dying man. He just didn't remember. maybe. Besides, what can be wrong? I told you, I don't know. Ooh, that dog gives me willies. Man's best friend. There's something very touching about such loyalty. It's that door over there, isn't it? Uh Uh-huh. I'll wait for you out here. I don't know what you're going to say to Mr. Jester, even if he's able to hear you. I think of something. If I hear anybody, even starting down the stairs, I'll cough nice and loud. Yeah, good. What the... What's the matter, George? You don't have to whisper, Angel. There's nobody in Mr. Jester's room. 
The dying man has disappeared. In just a moment, we'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. At a party the other evening, someone asked a friend of mine why he bought a particular brand of gasoline. My friend didn't have any real reasons to offer, and it started me thinking that maybe there are other motorists like him. The facts are, there are plenty of good reasons for buying Chevron Supreme gasoline. To begin with, it's a balanced gasoline that combines all eight high-performance qualities. After all, a gasoline can be made to stress one performance feature at the expense of others. However, Chevron Supreme gives you not one, not two, but all eight qualities in the correct balance for all-around top performance. Power, mileage, starting, warm-up, acceleration, anti-knock, vapor lock prevention, and area blending. And for the kind of driving you do, your engine needs each and every one of these qualities. You'll feel the difference from the very first tankful of Chevron Supreme. So shift to the gas with all eight for top performance all around. Drive in soon and fill your tank with all eight qualities, qualities you get in every gallon of Chevron Supreme gasoline at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Surprise, a lovely surprise. That's what a badly upset young girl keeps babbling to you because that's what her uncle has promised her. An uncle who has never done anything good for her in his entire life. Well, you go with her to the uncle, Glenn Jester, only to find him, surprise, on his deathbed. And, surprise, a changed man of goodwill who has made out a very generous will. And surprise again, missing from his deathbed right after that. Even if your name is George Valentine, you find that a few surprises too many. I want to talk to the good doctor. Ben. No time for ceremony. Not here. Julia Slager's room is down here. Yeah. Wait. No need to bother opening that door. It's open. And she's gone. Lenore's among the absent, too. Uh huh. Well, somehow I expected that. I guess even surprises come in through. Hey, wait. Yeah, what is it? Down there, the other wing. I see lights. That's right. The living room, the library. They're this way. Yeah. George, listen. Hey, come on. Well, surprise. No, I won't see it. All who are missing shall be found. Come in, please. Oh, the. the coffin. Yeah. Mr. Jester has. Has passed away. Oh, we're oh, sorry. Do- Dr. Hammer just called me. As you may have gathered, Mr. Juster always wanted things carried out in a certain way, even things like this. So? So, why not? I've called the funeral parlor in the city. They'll be here in the morning. The mystery's been solved. Did, did you say something, Miss Brooks? Oh, nothing important. Well, I don't suppose there's anything else any of us can do until the morning. I don't mind staying up with you all night, George, but I don't even know what you're trying to think through. Any more cigarettes, Angel? Uh, here, take mine. That's the last. Uh-uh. I'll tell you one thing. I'll be glad to get out of here in the morning. Yeah. Lenore can come down here for the funeral later. Yes. I don't know what smells phony about this whole case, but something sure does. Maybe you're just being stubborn, darling. Uh, Maybe. Oh, good. Here it is. Hello? Yeah. Sheriff's office, yeah. Yeah, I've been waiting. Uh Uh-huh. I see. No question about the accident. Nothing wrong with the car mechanically. 
bad turn. No, nothing particular, mind. Yeah, thanks a lot. I told you you were grabbing at straws, darling, checking up on the accident. I guess you're right. But something else bothered me about that call. What do you mean? Somebody was very sure not to miss a word of the conversation. I heard a click. Eavesdropper. It's no longer a secret that I'm more than just a casual friend of Miss Matson's. All right, so what? There's still nothing you can look for, George. There's nothing to hang the slightest suspicion on. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I'll turn in and let you get a few hours rest. under the head of snooping. But I'm sure the late Mr. Chester wouldn't mind. Ah, what do we hear? Active Investigations Incorporated. Dear Mr. Chester, we are happy to report that our operatives have been successful in completing your assignment by locating your niece, Miss Lenore Matson. Her residence is 2463 Ridgeway Avenue. Ah, get away from me! Ah, get away from me! Ah, get away from me. Ah, get... Something is breaking at last. Dead. The dog is dead. He jumped at me. Like a mad dog. He jumped at me. I had to do it. All right, Dr. Hammer. Please calm down. Uncle Glenn and... and the only living thing he really loved. Yes, it's been quite a night. I'm sorry. So sorry. I only meant to drive him off. I grabbed the nearest thing to me, the shovel. Tell me, Doctor, what were you doing out in the garden at this hour of the night? What? Oh, oh! I reminded myself that I left something in my car, the blanks for death certificates. I wanted to have it ready where I could fill it out. I I couldn't sleep very well anyway. I make a motion we all go inside to catch our deaths of cold. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Take Lenora in, will you, Angel? Mm. And make a pot of coffee for everybody, too. Mm. Sure will. Come on, Lenora. Tomorrow I'll, I'll bury the poor creature. Somewhere here in the garden. Glenn would want it that way. Glenn, Glenn. The man left us some money. All right, I'm grateful. And I know we should speak kindly of the dead, but I can't be that two-faced. Why, Julia. Oh, look, Dr. Hammer. There's some scratches on your hand. Yeah. you better go inside. Put something on it. Yes, yes, Julie. Maybe I should. Uh, coming in, Valentine? Uh, in a few minutes. I'd like to have a few words with Julia, if I may. Why, certainly. Well, I'll see you later. Yeah. Julia... You seem to be a sensible, practical gal, and I need help. Help? What kind of help? Oh, well, uh, I'm afraid I've been masquerading in this house under, well, let's say, slightly false pretenses. What? I'm not just a friend of Lenore Manson's. She hired me as a sort of private investigator because she feared what her uncle might consider a surprise. I knew as much. You did? Yes, I listened in on your conversation with the sheriff's office. You did? I'm a snoop at heart, Mr. Valentine. Still, for the life of me, I-, I can't imagine why you think there's anything wrong about what happened here tonight. Well, a few questions in my mind don't seem to have answers. You think I have them? Maybe. All right. All right. I realize that Mr. Justo is pretty far gone tonight. But still, I-, I can't quite make myself believe he couldn't summon enough strength to sign his signature to that will. Well, he tried. I saw him try, really try. But what difference does anything like that make anyway? The will is just as valid without a signature, as long as we had two reliable witnesses like you and Miss Brooks. Well, I told you I just had some questions. The answers aren't anywhere as clear. I think you're trying a little too hard, Mr. Valentine. I honestly do. The dog. The poor murdered dog. Well, surely the doctor had the right to defend himself. The snoopy neighbor down the road said the dog was always with Mr. Juster. Always. Well. The door to the house was open. The dog wasn't chained. Why wasn't Biff with Mr. Juster? Why didn't Mr. Juster ask for it? Well, the thought never occurred to me. And more interesting, why did the devoted dog stay in the garden all the time? Never moved out of the garden. Mr. Valentine, your flashlight in my eyes, it bothers me. Oh, sorry. You like the darkness better? Much better. Uh Uh-huh. Could it be that the dog was already near its master because he was buried somewhere here in the garden? Dead for a day or two as a result of a perfectly legitimate automobile accident? You're crazy. Could it be that the man upstairs wasn't Glenn Juster at all, but an imposter? No, I know you're crazy. The only man who could look enough like him to his niece who hasn't seen him in years? His brother, Jason? Mr. Valentine, 
People tell me I'm an attractive woman. I'm going to be a very rich woman. I could be very grateful. Very. You could? I could make a deal. Any kind of a deal. Like the deal you made with Jason? He's in that nice, expensive coffin now, remember? No, I'm afraid I'm not interested, Julia. You fool! Fool! You don't need any more partners, Julia. Now, what? I wouldn't move an inch if I were you, young man. I wouldn't like to use this gun, but I will if I have to. Hey, Freddy, nosy, nosy. So I heard. I really did have only a bunch of questions with no answers until you killed that dog, Doctor. Killed it deliberately in cold blood. Keep your voice down and stand still. After Julia eavesdropped on the phone, you knew I'd be snooping around. And you had to have a legitimate excuse for some newly dug earth in the garden. Make him stop talking, Fred. There's where Glenn Juster is buried now, isn't it? Please make him stop, Fred. That's where you'll put his brother Jason's body instead when you're ready to send the coffin to the mortuary with Glenn Juster in it. Shut up, shut up. When Glenn died, we found out he didn't leave us a cent. Not me and not Julie. After all, we had to take from him, too. He loved his ironic joke. So we got in touch with his brother. A detective agency had already located him for Glenn. Stop it! Why are you telling him all this? Stop it! Why? He has to die anyway. Let him have some of those precious answers. But Jason saw the wonderful opportunity. And he really made the most of it, didn't he? Took the lion's share for himself in the will. So you killed him. With him never found, we'll strip the house and the deposit box of everything. The perfect crime. Because the body in the coffin will be that of Glenn Juster, who died a perfectly innocent death. And we have a perfectly legal will. While Jason's body will lie under that of the dog in the garden. There'll be two bodies in that grave, Valentine. Start walking. Now, you listen, Hammer. I said start walking. But first, I need some light, don't I? Full in your eyes, Buster. Julian! Julian, where is he? I can't see. Here I am, Buster. (laughs) This gun is safer with me. I'll kill you. You're going to help me find another surprise for my client. Comes the weekend and many motorists will pack their cars and head for fun in the snow country. But believe me, it's no fun when roads are slippery and cold weather freezes up your radiator. For safety's sake... Be sure you get cold weather protection, antifreeze in your radiator, and tire chains, too, before you take a trip into the snow. Get cold weather protective service at independent Chevron gas stations or standard stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. So Uncle Glenn did have a surprise for me. The lovely surprise. Yep. Yeah, the real will of Glenn Juster, leaving practically all of his money to the only innocent victim of his foul nature. What did that business of the signature mean, George? The act Jason put on about not being able to sign his name. Well, that was the last piece of protection they gave themselves, Angel. Nobody would question the will because we could all testify that we saw Glenn Juster dictate it. But a signature, well, that's something they couldn't duplicate. With us as witnesses, they didn't need it. Mm-hmm. It's funny. I, I always thought of Uncle Jason as the... Poor imposed upon man. And Uncle Glenn is the greatest villain that was ever born. Now, strangely enough, they've almost reversed themselves. Yes. Glenn Juster promised you a surprise. He didn't realize how much of a surprise it was going to be. George. <laughs> Easy, Brooksy. It's just some neighbor's dog. Uh, let's get out of here. <laughs> Tonight's adventure, George Valentine, has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It was written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Kenneth Webb. Virginia Eiler was heard as Lenore, Griff Barnett as Hammer, Lee Patrick as Julia, Fred Howard as Juster, and Earl Keene as Biff. The music was composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>